If you're a man who's naturally more introverted and you really enjoy spending time by yourself and you're easily overwhelmed with too much social contact and this idea of meeting women is a little bit difficult for you, you haven't figured out online dating, maybe you're getting dates but no second dates and you haven't been able to find the right girlfriend and life partner yet but you'd like to, then this video is for you. In this video, I'm gonna give you a couple of tips that you can use as an introvert in order to be more successful with women, in order to then get more dates, get the dates with the right kind of women, and find a girlfriend or a life partner who's right for you. First of all, you have to understand that there's nothing wrong with being an introvert. And also, being introverted or being extroverted have nothing to do with being confident. Being confident and secure and able, which is skill, skill is different to confidence, but being able, knowing how to build attraction and confidence have nothing to do with whether you're extroverted or introverted. I used to be very, very loud and very, very insecure for a big part of my life. When my family moved from the west of Germany to the east, I had quite a rough year because I didn't know how to make any friends because I didn't have any social skills. I was very loud and extroverted, but deeply insecure inside. And it's very difficult to share, right? I feel a little bit vulnerable when I'm sharing this, but it's true. So just because you're introverted, does not mean that you can't learn to become confident. I could learn to become confident in general and then in the niche context of dating from being an extrovert and have plenty of friends, clients from 12 different countries around the world at this stage, 80% of whom are introverts. It's a learnable thing. So first of all, accept it's learnable. That's one thing. And the other thing is that you should start owning the nerd within. You probably have some nerdy hobbies, right? Maybe you like building boats, miniature boats, for example, right? Like some of my clients do. Maybe you're into Harry Potter, Star Wars, right? Probably a lot of you guys are computer scientists or graphic designers, you run your own business, whatever, right? You have whatever nerdy hobby you have. Now, instead of being ashamed of that, instead of thinking that you should hide that or not talk about that, you should actually own it. You should go to the date with a girl and talk about that. Now, one of the big mistakes that a lot of guys make is they either don't talk about their nerdy hobbies, a lot of introverted men, especially between the age of 30 and 50 make, between the age of 30 and 50 make is they either don't talk about their hobbies or they talk about it way too much. Now, I don't want you to sit there for 45 minutes talking about the Lord of the Rings. You're gonna bore the fuck out of her. Don't do that, okay? But also, don't not talk about it at all. Because remember, women react much more to the vibe and the passion and the certainty you bring as opposed to, well, the words themselves. Women don't actually care about your nerdy hobbies. Sorry to say that, right? They don't actually care whether it's personal development, dating, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter. Do you actually think, unless she's a Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings fan herself, which is fine, uh, she doesn't really care whether you're into Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings, but if you talk about your passion for the storyline, if you talk about your passion for building miniature trains, right? You know, these little miniature train thingies and how you have 73 different models at home and whatever, right? The passion that you use to convey that message is gonna trigger emotions in her because you gotta keep in mind, there's something called mirror neurons. And I don't know the whole scientific background, I'm not a neurologist, I'm not a neuroscientist, but from what I understand, from my bro science perspective here, is that when you exude certain, when you have a strong emotional state, Right? you unconsciously exhibit certain micro expressions and her eyes are scanning it. And remember, 99% of the information that's coming to your brain is filtered out. Only the most relevant things are coming in. But just because it's filtered out from your conscious mind, it's still making your way into your unconscious mind. So she's scanning that and then she's unconsciously replicating some of those micro expressions and thereby she's able to feel what you feel. Thereby we are able to feel what other people feel because we're scanning their micro expressions and a part of us is imitating them. In a little bit, that's the way I understand it. I may be off. But basically, you can detect a strong and mental and emotional state in somebody. And if there's rapport, she's gonna feel similar emotions. If there's rapport, okay? If there's a degree of connection, she'll feel similar emotions. 
that's why I've had dates where I was with girls. I've told this story before, where I just talked about personal development for half an hour, where I basically gave her a presentation on the six different human needs, and I really nerded out. It's a nerdy thing as well, right? I mean, most girls aren't that much into personal development. And then we talked five or 10 minutes about other things, and then we went into a hotel, and we had yeah, an amazing night together, right? And I actually, we ended up dating for a couple of months. So instead of being ashamed of the nerd within, own it. But please, on a very technical level, giving you a little technical advice here, don't talk about it for too long. Talk about it a little bit, okay? For a few minutes. Talk about it for a few minutes and then move on to something else. That's the most important thing. The next thing, you have to start pushing yourself beyond what's comfortable. You cannot just accept the emotional discomfort, these invisible walls that you sometimes feel towards engaging in a general social context, towards engaging in a dating context, talking to women online, Facebook, Instagram, online speed dating events, right? Supermarkets, streets, bars, nightclubs. Yeah, you feel a bit of an emotional resistance there. As long as you stay there and you don't make the decision to break through, you'll never be able to meet the kind of women you'd like to meet. You're gonna miss out on potential short-term and long-term adventures with women. You're, you're probably not gonna find the right girlfriend and life partner. And what's gonna to happen to somebody, to a high-quality man, high-value man like yourself, is you're smart enough to not settle for nobody, right? You're gonna find somebody. You're gonna, that, that's, it might even be worse. It might even be worse. You're gonna end up in a relationship with a woman who is not right for you, and you're gonna feel lonely even though you're in a relationship, okay? So by not being able to push yourself out of your emotional comfort zone, your home, right, and venturing out into the world of potential rejections, you know, minor emotional upsets, because a rejection should be nothing more than a minor emotional upset. If you can't do that, you'll miss out on meeting amazing women. You'll miss out on a relationship where you truly feel loved. You gotta understand, I've spoken about that before. We as human beings exist in three different zones. The zone of emotional comfort and certainty, the zone of growth, where things feel a little bit challenging and this nervousness, but we're still able to act. And then around that, there is the zone of overwhelm, where if we push ourselves too much, our brain panics and we shut down. You may have had that when you were in university or you're trying to fill out job applications. You have any kind of deadline and you've been procrastinating with a project for a certain amount of time. And then a couple of days before the workload stacks and you realize, oh shit, how am I supposed to be able to handle that? Your brain panics and you can't do anything for a couple of minutes or even an hour or two. And then you kind of like get yourself together again and then you somehow try to cram it in. But there's so much, at that stage, there's so much cortisol and adrenaline in your brain, stress hormone, that the retention rate of the knowledge, let's say you're cramming for an exam, is much lower. Right? And also you're stressed and also it's not enjoyable. So you can push yourself into a level of over, overwhelm, which is not useful. For, that's why my coaching program is designed in such a way that I challenge all of our clients into the growth zone. Okay, They get challenged, but they don't get overwhelmed. Because I could ask you to walk up to a couple of girls, get their numbers, maybe even kiss a girl or two, and you'd say, sorry, that's legitimately too much right now. Or I wouldn't know how to handle that. There's things that I could ask you to do right now that will overwhelm you. My coaching program is built in a very systematic way that it produces predictable wins because each step is just a tiny bit more difficult, a tiny bit more difficult, a tiny bit more difficult than the one before. And that's how you achieve anything in life, right? Now, obviously, sometimes the jump may be a little bit too much. You venture out into the zone of overwhelm, but then you come back into comfort and growth. That's how you've been able to achieve success in your career so far, right? By pushing yourself a little bit, by not getting overwhelmed. The reason you haven't been able to find the right girlfriend or life partner yet is because you don't have a plan. Okay, you're so, if you're somebody who's extroverted and nerdy, you probably like systems, you like routines, right? And yeah, like I remember when I was young, I was looking at women and I was thinking, my God, I have no idea on how to make her like me. So what I tried is I always tried to be the nice guy. You've probably tried that as well. Intro introverts try to do that as well. When they talk to women, they try to always be very helpful, very friendly, very kind. And that's true for every single one of my clients. Every single one of those people are really good-hearted people, really kind people, people from 12 different countries, right? Various different cultural backgrounds, right? Various different religious or political backgrounds. But they're all very kind and respectful people. But almost all of them come from a point of, like, well, in their past, basically, they were always too nice. They were always a little bit too giving. And... 
thereby they were able to create a lot of connection to the woman, but she didn't particularly see them as valuable, therefore they were lacking the element of attraction. And then you get friend zoned, right? And that used to be the same for me. I always try to help women. I always try to help women with their problems, even if that meant them talking to me about issues they have with other guys, how they're trying to date other guys. But the crazy thing is, I would start talking to girls and initially they're interested in me. But since I didn't know how to create a man-to-woman connection, how to move things forward, how to keep her attracted within the first couple of minutes and then over the course of dates, since I didn't know how to do that, I panicked and then I was like, oh, okay, let me shift into my comfort zone. And my comfort zone as a personal development martial art nerd was being the coach. So what I did was I started asking her, okay, so what are your goals? What do you want to achieve? Okay. And I started coaching her. And then the interesting thing is we, as men, we elicit different behaviors from women. Only then after I lost the frame, they gave me the chance plenty of times. Plenty of women gave me the chance back in the day, right? To build attraction. But once they realized that I didn't do it, they, okay, they realized hmm, probably it's just a friend. They followed suit. They followed my lead in that sense. And yeah, you're able to elicit behaviors, friend-like behaviors, friendship behaviors from women, or attraction-building behaviors. In other words, she sees you as a guy who could be a potential life partner, not just her new gay best friend, okay? But I lost the chance because I didn't know how to do it. And then I was coaching them and they started telling me about issues they had with other guys. And even though I didn't like that, for me it was always, okay, some kind of contact to women is better than none. And if I can achieve that by helping them with the problems they have with other guys, I was like, okay, okay, okay cool, then I'm gonna do that. But it wasn't helpful for me or her. So if you're somebody who, who has these things, and like a lot of people who are introverted are very kind and respectful people, right? At least from my experience. Now, obviously, at a grand scale, if you were to look at studies, is there any correlation between being an introvert and being a respectful guy? Probably not. Probably there's no correlation between, you probably, you couldn't say, if you were to look at data, it wouldn't show you that introverts are nicer and kinder than extroverts doesn't make any sense at all. Probably rather the opposite. But in my experience, the people that apply, the men who apply to join this coaching program, they're people who really want to treat women well. They're people who want to do the best, who are willing to invest a lot. Right? Maybe you've done that. Maybe you've had past relationships. Maybe you've dated women where you invested a lot. You've actually pushed yourself out of your introverted zone and you send her flowers. You try to make an effort. Maybe you made a painting, right? I've heard all kinds of stories, believe me. But you realize the more you invested, the more you invested, the more you invested, the less, attra the less attracted and the less interested she became in you. So, quick recap. One, it's learnable. Confidence and attraction is learnable, no matter whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. Second, own the nerd within. Talk about your hobbies. Not too much, but a little bit. Conveyed with passion, no self-doubt. Compassion. Sorry, passion, not compassion. <laughs> Whereas compassion... Probably also not too bad a trait to convey uh, at times. And lastly, you have to push yourself out of your zone of emotional comfort and understand that being the nice guy is not necessarily going to bring you those results. So use and keep all the best qualities you have as an introvert, but also make the decision to learn attraction to learn how to build connection, to learn how to build a man-to-woman connection because only then she'll ever see you as a life partner and not just her new best friend. And obviously, if you want to learn how to do that in detail, if you want to learn how you can find the right girlfriend or life partner staying an introvert without changing yourself while developing amazing social skills, amazing dating skills, then apply for a first free coaching call with a link underneath this profile. During a call like that, we're going to look at your situation, you individually, and we're going to look at what your blind spots are, your sticking points that have been preventing you from finding the right girlfriend and life partner, and we'll map out a plan that'll help you achieve that. For me, it's important that you keep in mind this is never about changing you. It's helping you return back to who you are. Remember the story of the David, Michelangelo saw the David in the marble. He just caved away. He just carved away what didn't belong. It's a little bit like that. Now, this metaphor is not 100% complete. Remember, every truth is but a half truth. Yes, it's about... That's what happens in a coaching program, by the way. We 
are in conversations, right? There's actual coaching happening. We identify mindset problems, blind spots. They're called blind spots for a reason because you don't even know that you have that problem. And we pull them out and we replace them with truth and we replace them with what's effective. And it's a little bit like this. Let's say you're in a car, right? And you, you try to make a lot happen. Maybe you're trying online dating, you don't know how to text. You've tried to meet women, but for some reason it doesn't work. You meet them for a first date, but you can't meet them for a second date because they just lose interest in you and they ghost you. So you're putting a lot of effort in. It's like driving a car, right? So you have the acceleration pressed, but at the same time, the handbrake is pulled. So there's a lot of steam coming from the engine. The motor is about to explode, you're, but you're only moving marginally. So what a coaching program does, it's a little bit like you take the handbrake, vroom, and you accelerate automatically. That's the one part of it, carving away what doesn't belong. But then you also learn the necessary techniques, strategies, and mindsets, and the psychology, and the social dynamics that you just have to understand in order to have a happy long-term relationship as well as, success, as well as success in the early stages of dating. So, if you're serious, then I'm coming to a free call. The first call is completely for free, and we'll have a look at your situation, and I'd be very happy to help you.